Hey everyone, welcome to episode 5, Nothing Strikes Back, since there's nothing to strike back to. We're wrapping up the benchmarks for the external GPU adapter with this Dell E6230 and the GTX 970. Details on the system specs will be in the description. Rise of the Tomb Raider came out in 2015, but for some reason it feels like it was 2016. And yes, one year does make a difference the older you get. I do love the relaunch of the Tomb Raider franchise and I'm always looking forward to when the new one's coming out. We are running with a medium preset and with the X11, Rise of the Tomb Raider does give us a nice overall average of 51 frames per second. The geothermal valleys area does struggle a bit, but it does on pretty much almost any system. It will put a strain on a CPU that only has two cores. Shadow of the Tomb Raider from 2018. Though it is newer and supposedly looks better, I still like the look of the uh, previous one, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Don't get me wrong, I still had a lot of fun playing this game since it does take place in the country I was born in. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we did test the game on the medium preset and we ran the game on both DX11 and DX12 to see how they compare. You probably already guessed which one will perform better on a two core system. With DX11, we do get an average of 34 35 frames per second. And with DX12, we do drop down a little bit to about 33 or 34 frames per second. DX12 does work better on a system with a higher core count. Even then, this game ran great on DX11. I'm pretty happy being above 30 frames per second on a single player third person game. Counter Strike Global Offensive, a game which I played since I was in college 20 years ago. Of course, back then it was just Counter Strike. We've bumped up the settings to the highest possible and with that I would have loved to see an average frame rate of above 100 frames per second but I guess we're going to be settling with 76 frames per second. Not sure if it was me but it did feel like there were some areas where it did stutter here and there. It just it could have been the mouse that I was using or the surface that I was playing on. Devil May Cry 5, which is a game that I would like to get more into like my partner has, but um, not, not, not yet. I guess I'll have to maybe give it a shot when I have more time. But it does run great on the highest settings possible. We're just below 60 frames per second at 54 frames per second on average. Hitman from 2016. We're running this game on the low preset with DX11 and we're getting some pretty good performance with an average frame rate of 48 frames per second. Even with the low preset, it still does look visually stunning, at least in my opinion. Definitely playable, and I would recommend it. Just Cause 4 from 2018. Not as pretty as Just Cause 3, but it still looks somewhat nice. I'm used to the vibrant and colorful atmosphere from Just Cause 3, instead of the muddy, washed out look of this one. We're running with the custom medium preset so we don't put too much strain on the system. And even then, the game does look good and we do get an average frame rate of 32 frames per second. PUBG. Now this is a game which I could not run with the integrated GPU from the Intel i5-3340M. Now we're able to run the game with the external GTX 970. Since the optimization isn't the greatest on this game, we've set it to the lowest preset possible. I'm glad we did because we're only getting an average of like 36 frames per second. It's playable, but it's not a game that I would recommend installing on this setup unless you're desperate to play it. Apex Legends is another online battle royale type game like PUBG. Now the difference would be that we can actually run the game quite well on this type of system. I'm not a huge fan of the game, no, not in a bad way. You know, it's one of those games I haven't really given, I guess, a try or a shot just for these uh, benchmark videos, but as I do these, I am getting into it a little bit more, little by little. We're using a custom high settings in the game, and with that, we're almost reaching 60 frames per second on average. The game runs quite well, quite smooth, and it would be a game that I'd recommend installing on this type of setup. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt from 2015. Now it's kind of hard to believe that this game is already 5 years old. I do remember watching the announcements and the E3 coverage and previews before the game came out. 
You may have noticed that I haven't really progressed too much into this game since you're always seeing the beginning portion of the game in most of my videos. I should probably have my partner log into her account so I can show you different parts of the game. Anyways, with the medium preset, we do retain a lot of the visual splendor of the game and it does perform quite well. We do get an average frame rate of 49 frames per second. Alrighty, so 9 games in one video. I did try to keep the talking to a minimum for each game since it's not bedtime yet. Unless you're watching this in bed and you're about to fall asleep, then I hope that my soothing voice does take you away to dreamland. So we got an 8 year old business laptop, an i5 processor with only 2 cores and 4 threads. It was never meant for gaming, but we were able to turn it into a gaming laptop with the help of an adapter which allows a desktop GPU to handle the workload. It's no longer a portable setup since we do have additional components, but I imagine that if I were to build some sort of an enclosure for the power supply in the GPU, that we might be able to retain its portability. At the same time, I have seen prices on portable 15 inch full HD display screen for about 150 bucks. The enclosure might be a project that I might work on in the future, but I'm still impressed with the external GPU adapter. I went into this not knowing if it would work. Now would this be a solution for everyone out there with an older laptop? In my opinion, I would say no. Now if you do have the extra funds and you don't and you don't want to upgrade to a gaming laptop, then it would be an option. For me, I like it. That's because when I do travel, I do take this laptop for work, not gaming. I'll use it to store pictures while on vacation, do some minor photo editing, some writing, stuff like that. But let's say I do go somewhere and I'll be gone for a while and I do want a game, then I take the extra stuff with me. That does conclude the series, at least for right now. In the meantime, I do want to thank you for watching, take care and have a great day.